Sally Hammond, Virtual Wear Bullet. Out here in the backyard on July 21st, doing my July q and I've been doing this every other month since the beginning of the year, and it's time for another. So I got 10 questions from things that people sent in online, through email, on the discussion forum, through social media. I'll go through those in a minute. I got myself a nice, cool hard cider. You know, last time I think I had an iced tea and someone made fun of me for that. So uh, I got something a little, a little bit more serious here. Delicious Martinelli's hard cider. What's available at Costco? I don't know about now. Um, before we start out, I want to cover a couple of things real quick. First of all, uh, if you follow me on YouTube, you may have seen the review that I did about a certified Angus beef uh, steakhouse seasoned tri-tip that was available at Costco. And I didn't particularly care for it, and I said as much in the video. And I got a very nice correspondence, the email, from somebody in the marketing department at Certified Angus Beef. They acknowledged that, you know, the taste is a personal thing, and maybe I didn't like that particular product, and we corresponded about it. They were very kind. Um, I just wanted to make it clear if there was any misunderstanding among my viewers that I have used a lot of certified Angus beef over the years. I like it very much. I've used briskets. I've used ground beef. I've cooked a lot of steaks. Uh, that particular product I didn't particularly like the flavor of. Uh, I didn't like the way it was packaged. I gave them some feedback on that. I didn't uh, like the way it was trimmed. Uh, but those are all just my preferences. So um, I want to thank them actually for the feedback. It's not often that you hear from a manufacturer when you provide a critique of their product and we had a nice conversation through email so thank you very much Certified Angus Beef for uh, your constructive comments and uh, I really appreciate you reaching out to me about that. Second thing I wanted to mention before I get into the questions is I just wanted to say a little bit about failure. Um, you know failure is a part of life it's how we learn and it's an important part of learning barbecue. Uh, in this day and age you know people want to be successful from day one and it's understandable because you spend several hundred dollars on this guy right here and you decide you want to make a brisket like you tasted in Austin Texas on vacation so you go out and you buy a really expensive USDA prime brisket and you buy a bunch of toys and tools and you buy charcoal and smoke wood and you don't want to waste that $80 brisket of course and you're disappointed when it doesn't turn out the way you think it should um, you know failure is not bad failure is how we learn uh, I would encourage you to fail. If you're uh, not failing, you're not really learning. So uh, don't be afraid to get it wrong. The internet does give us sort of a, a false sense of security that we can go out and find just the perfect method and technique and that we can hit it out of the ballpark the first time at bat. That is not how baseball works. That is not how most anything in life works. Uh, we learn from our failures. So. Don't be afraid to fail at barbecue. I would recommend always that you start with less expensive cuts of meat like chicken. Work on those, get some success under your belt. Work your way up to ribs, to pork butt. Pork butt's a very easy thing to cook. It's hard to screw it up. And you can spend your entire life trying to perfect brisket and not get that quite right. You gotta be like Aaron Franklin and cook 110 of those per day, day after day, before you get to the point where you understand all the ins and outs of brisket. Don't be sad or angry that you can't get brisket quite right. I've been at this 21 years, I still don't have it totally dialed in. So just remember, failure is a part of barbecue, failure is a part of life, don't be afraid to fail. All right, so let's get to the questions. Uh, question number one, back in May, you published a video which you recommended the Winco MXB 1300Q stainless steel mixing bowl as a replacement for the water pan in the 18 inch Weber Smoky Mountain cooker. I bought one and put it inside my smoker, but the fit seemed a bit loose and I was not confident that it would stay in place as I filled it with water. So this is the pan that we're talking about here and uh, I found it on Amazon. We'll put a link to it here on the, uh, on the screen, also at the end of the video and in the description. This pan happens to be the exact same uh, diameter as the standard pan that comes with the smoker but it has a more shallow profile, so it doesn't get in the way of the charcoal and the smoke wood. Um, there are variations in, you know, slight variations in the size of this, and there are slight variations actually in the diameter of the middle cooking section of this guy. So if you put this in, it doesn't feel super secure. What you can do is uh, you can make a slight modification to the smoker. 
uh, I recently published a video on how to extend the flanges that the pan sits on, pushing those flanges inward a little bit, which will give you a little more bite under the edge of any water pan you have. In fact, it's not un unknown for people to complain that the stock water pan that comes with the smoker doesn't fit quite stably enough. So we'll post the link to that video. Check that out. You can see how you can just use a couple of simple washers to make an adjustment in here that will make any water pan more stable in your Weber Smoky Mountain cooker. Question number two, a continuation on this pan. Um, in your video about the alternative replacement water pan, you said the Winco stainless steel mixing bowl is a 13 quart bowl. That's not possible. The bowl looks much smaller than that. What gives? Um, we'll put a picture up on the screen of the label. You can see that in fact, they do say this is a 13 quart bowl and that is a big fat lie. Uh, this bowl actually holds seven quarts of water very easily. It could hold a little bit more than that, but I wouldn't really recommend it. Standard water pan for the Smoky Mountain Cooker, 18 inch, is two and a half gallons. The old one, pre-2009, is only a gallon. Um, I complained about this to the manufacturer, and they said, well, this is what's called an economy pan in the industry. It's not, it's not very, you know, expensive. It's not very, uh, you know, it's not a high-end pan. Well, I said, wait a minute. If you say it's a 13 quart pan and it holds seven quarts, that's not just, you know, some little difference. That's a huge difference and that's deceptive. And they didn't have any reply to that. So I complained to the higher authorities and I got a nice letter back from this company saying, yeah, that's a misunderstanding in manufacturing. When this goes back to the next round of manufacturing, we will ask them to relabel this pan. So it is not your uh, imagination that this is not a 13 a 13 quart pan. It's only about a seven quart pan, but it does the job in the smoky mountain cooker. I used it recently when I cooked two pork butts. I wrapped it in foil. I mean, it's just as good as new. It did the job perfectly, and I don't really seem to have a fit problem in my cooker, especially when you're not using any water. So if you're looking for a different pan, this might be the one to try. And of course, we've got that video that you can check out on YouTube for more details about this pan. Question number three. I noticed you smoke tri-tip low and slow for Weber Smoky Mountain Smoke Day on Memorial Day weekend. I've used your online recipe for hot and fast tri-tip with great success for quite a while. Which way do you prefer? Well, as I mentioned um, in that video and the updated article that I did about it, I have been recommending hot and fast for a long time and I liked the way it worked and it was very quick. I hadn't cooked low and slow in a long, long time and so I did that. Uh, for Memorial Day weekend on smoke day and I really like the results. Um, I don't think it really matters too much one way or the other. I think frankly you can do it both ways but um, I think maybe for now I'm back in the low and slow camp. I really liked the way the meat looked. I liked the way it tasted. I liked the smoke flavor I got. Obviously if you cook the meat a little bit longer low and slow you're gonna get a little bit more smoke flavor on the meat. I guess maybe that's what appealed to me. So um, do it either way, it'll work well for you, but right now I'm giving a little bit of an edge to low and slow when I do tri-tip in the Smoky Mountain Cooker. Speaking of videos, question number four, thanks for all of your videos. I watch each one when it comes out. Well, thank you very much for doing that. I'd like to suggest you do a video on smoking cheese. I smoke cheese often and I think your viewers would enjoy a video on the subject. Uh, I appreciate that comment. That came from a fellow judge of mine. Uh, his name is Todd in Sacramento. Hello, Todd. Um, I have smoked cheese in my smoker 16 years ago and I think 18 years ago. Um, I did it by just putting a piece of uh, smoke wood on top of a couple of lit briquettes and uh, that worked just fine. But Todd was saying, you know, you should try one of these new uh, pellet smoking tubes. They're great. He likes the way it worked. So I did that recently and I smoked a variety of cheese on a very cold morning. I got great results. I did use a uh, smoking tube with some applewood pellets. Um, I've been sharing that cheese with my family, with my friends, my neighbors. Everybody seems to like it very much. Um, for me, I think it's a tiny bit strong. It, it was smoked for two hours, I think, personally for me. Uh, either I need to smoke it a little bit less time, or I need to take off a little bit of the outside edge on one side to kind of reduce the smoky flavor overall. But I would encourage you to check out that video. I'll put it up here on the screen. 
Uh, also put up a link for the article on the Virtual Weber Bullet website. You can check that out. And uh, you can try smoking cheese on a cold day at your house. There's not many of them this summer, of course, but um, probably something you want to put off to the fall. But uh, it's a lot of fun and very tasty, and people really seem to like it, so you might want to check it out. Question five. This is a, a discussion forum question. <laughs> I got logged out of the discussion forum while posting a very long message. How can I prevent this from happening? Okay, just a quick point on this. Discussion forum has a 15 minute timeout. If you don't change pages or post a message or move around, navigate, edit a post, within 15 minutes, it will log you out. And that is an attempt to basically prevent sessions from sitting there taking up resources on the system if someone just walks away from their computer for several hours and doesn't come back. So you need to compose your message and post it within 15 minutes. Uh, if you're not able to do that, I would suggest you compose your message using Notepad or uh, any kind of text editor or word processor. Then take your text, cut it, and paste it into the uh, thread and post your message that way. And that way you won't get logged out. Question six. I saw on one of your videos that you're using the Thermoworks Signals 4-channel Wi-Fi probe thermometer. I've been considering buying one. How do you like it? I like it very much. It's a great unit. Uh, it's a 4-channel probe thermometer so it uh, can handle three pieces of meat plus an air probe um, I like the form factor it's a little bit smaller than smoke which was the previous one that was a two-channel model um, I like this kind of a wedge shape the way the screen sort of lays back a little bit I like the fact that um, it's got now a controller an automatic temperature controller it's called billows I used it the other day when I cooked pork butt in this thing um, it held the cooker steady at 275 the whole time. I have never used a temperature control device in my life. This one uh, worked great. I had a good experience with it right out of the box. Um, the only glitch I did have and the feedback I gave uh, to those guys at Thermoworks was that if you own signals already and you're going to buy the Billows add-on, which is just the blower piece, uh, you do have to do a firmware upgrade to your signals to get the code necessary to run the blower. And uh, when that popped up on my, on my smartphone, I just ignored the request to do it. I thought, you know, I'm, I, I'm gonna cook. I, I'll upgrade firmware later. It wasn't written down in the instructions, unfortunately, that came with the Billows blower device. So I learned about it only by going to their tech support site and watching a video. So one of the keys is if you have signals, do the firmware download first, then plug in your Billows. And um, the thing worked great and it's, Signals is $229, um, Billows is a $59 add-on, so if you already got Signals, uh, the Billows isn't really that much more money uh, to add on that functionality. Some people complain about the app. I talked to one of the developers at Thermoworks about that. He says, frankly, the tech support view is that most of the problems with the app have to do with range to your Wi-Fi wireless router. So um, if you're having problems with the app, you might try moving your signals base unit a little bit closer to your Wi-Fi uh, and if not you might want to consider getting I think it's called a Wi-Fi repeater that you can plug in a little closer to your patio uh, your outdoor area and then get a stronger Wi-Fi signal to your signals outside okay the next two questions are sort of related they have to do with pork beautiful pork question seven picnic or pork butt what's your preference uh, well, pork butt's my preference. I like the ratio of meat to bone. Um, I like the variety of meat that's in there. I like how clean it is. You just kind of pull the bone out, pull out a little bits, a, a few bits of sort of questionable material, and you've got just a lot of usable meat in a pork butt. Um, the picnic end has, I think, a higher ratio of bone to meat. Uh, there's usually some skin attached. It's just a little harder to work with. Um, so my preference is pork butt. Question eight. Fat cap up or fat cap down on a pork butt? Um, I've done it both ways. Uh, recently I did fat cap down on a, on two pork butts that were untrimmed and I took the water pan out of the cooker so the fat was dripping down just right on the hot coals. A lot of, there's some people, I was gonna say a lot of people, that's not true, there's some people who like to do it that way. They like the flavor you get when those drippings hit the fire and then you know smoke up. For me, uh, two butts untrimmed it was just too much of that flavor too strong for me I think when I try it next time I will remove some of the fat or maybe 
take off the fat cap entirely uh, and try cooking without the water pan in place. But generally speaking, I cook with the water pan in place and whether I'm using water or no water with that pan there, you don't get those drippings in the fire and you get a much more mild flavor and that tends to be my preference. In which case, I don't think it really matters a whole lot whether you're cooking fat side up or down. The theory, I guess, is that you know if you cook it with the fat side down, then you have that leaner side up and you get more browning, uh, more bark on that top surface. That's probably undoubtedly true. If you flip it the other way and have the fat cap up, this whole theory of all oh, the fat you know renders and base the meat, that's a bunch of BS. That's really not true. And I don't think you will get probably quite the bark on the bottom. So this is why a lot of people would like to either cook it fat cap down to get bark on the top, or they'll take the, the fat cap off entirely and then you'll get good browning on both sides. And you can even you know, flip part way through if you want to, to try to achieve more good bark on both sides. I typically don't tend to flip. <laughs> when I cook pork butt, I'm very lazy. Fat cap up or down, I guess if I had to say, I would say probably trim it off <laughs> or maybe cook it fat side down to get better bark on top. That's my final answer. Question nine, can you fit a rib rack in the 14 and a half inch Smoky Mountain cooker? What's the best rib rack for this cooker? Uh, I will link you to uh, a very informative thread on the Virtual Wear Bulletin Board where people are talking about that subject. Um, a couple of rib racks are mentioned, but the one that comes up again and again is from Brinkman. It, uh, we'll throw a picture up here of it. It seems to fit just right. And I think you could even put two of them in that little cooker. You do need to cut your ribs in half though. Uh, cut the slabs in half, and then you can stack them in that rib rack, and it does a great job in the 14 inch smoker. And finally, question number 10. Uh, I recently moved and I now have a wooden deck that my smoker sits on. Can you recommend a pad to put underneath that will be able to withstand the heat from the bottom of the smoker? Well, if you have a 2009 or newer Weber Smoky Mountain cooker, yours came with the heat shield that sits underneath the bottom of the charcoal bowl. And believe it or not, the little air gap between the bottom of the cooker and that shield is an excellent insulator and it will keep most anything from catching on fire below that uh, heat shield, whether it's a wooden deck or something on your concrete patio. Now, I'm a firm believer in the belt and suspenders approach, you know, the belt and the suspenders to keep the pants up. So put the heat shield in place, there's your belt and your suspenders would be to put something else under the cooker to protect your wooden deck. I would be looking for one of those concrete infused um, you know, grilling mats. Um, there's a bunch of them on Amazon. I'll put a link up for one that I think looks particularly good. They do talk about having a particular distance you know, between your grill and the pad, but given that the smoker has got the heat shield, I think that you're gonna be okay. It's not gonna cause any harm to the grill pad. Um, and that grill pad will catch any drips or drops and protect from heat uh, that comes off the bottom of your smoker. Well, that wraps up this Q&A for July. We'll do another one in September. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you very much. If you have any questions you'd like me to answer, please send an email to the address you see on the screen. I'd also uh, appreciate it if you would like and subscribe to my videos. That helps other people find them. Uh, and I'm trying to build up my viewership on YouTube, so thank you in advance for doing that. Stay cool, everybody. It is so hot out there this summer in America. Be careful, stay hydrated. Don't overexert yourself out in the backyard with your smoker. Be careful. And um, hope you have a good summer. I hope you had a great 4th of July. I certainly did with my family and friends. I hope you did too. And uh, we will see you after back to school, sadly, in September. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.